I should probably sit a little more gracefully, a little more flatteringly, but sit still somehow casual. Today is April 27th, uh, which means I have 25 weeks until the wedding. I've been having a lot of nightmares lately about not getting the dress finished in time, so I'm going to do a little bit of work on that today. Now, one of the things that's been holding me back, as silly as it sounds, is that I can't really work on the embroidery until nighttime because none of the rooms in my house get dark enough to use the projector with until nighttime. But when I was in Louisiana and I was doing some work, I learned that a lot of the petals are a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be, which is good news because that means I'll get a lot more of them done a lot quicker. But that also means for the extra small ones, the ones right at the very top, I can actually fit that on a uh, sheet of paper. So I'm probably just gonna print myself a template real quick or print myself the, uh, the sheets real quick and just trace them out. So that way I can do them like on the table real quick and don't have to set up my projector and do all that. So I can queue up a whole bunch of them. I need approximately 10 of the extra small ones. And I can probably do like four on each two by two. Um, frame so I don't have to go out and get my large frame from the car yet. So in order to do all of this, I need to actually go put away everything that is in my room. But uh, the other problem is I went to the gym because, you know, I'm going to the gym now and I did arms two days ago and my arms feel like they are about to fall off. So my priorities for today or for the next couple of days are I need to clean out my room. I need to decide which petals are going to be the really small ones. And those are the ones that are going to be on the very top. So there's going to be a lot of visibility there. They're also going to be relatively small. So I don't want the design to be too ridiculous because um, otherwise it's just not going to work. And I would like to get those all stitched up. Because yeah, just looking at my notes, I've estimated that I'm going to need a grand total of about 48 petals. So if I can get 10 more done this week, or I think I have five done, I'll just start to feel a lot better as I get more and more things done. I spent a lot of time designing petals at my mother's house. If I wasn't actively like working on the dress, um, I did spend a lot of time designing a couple of more. All right, so I think I'm going to drink my matcha, maybe watch a YouTube video or two, and uh, go get to work. All right, today is May 6th, which means that we are a little over 23 weeks out from the wedding, uh, which means that at a bare minimum, I need to get at least two petals done per week, every week until the wedding, and that's to finish just barely on time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to kind of speed that up a little bit. So this week I have four petals on the frame. I'm working on the smallest ones, so the ones that are going to be this top tier, which I've decided are going to be homages to a bunch of the shows that we have done together, because us doing theater together is a really big part of our story and our relationship. So I have two done already. I am in the middle of the third one, and I just took a break real quick because he went off to go watch the new Doctor Strange movie, which I'm I just said, go have fun, go go do your thing. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> so I think after I get these four petals stitched, my next priority is something that I honestly really should have done a long time ago. And that is make sure that I can actually get the water soluble marker off of the tool. I see no reason why it should be an issue, but just to be on the safe side, I wanna go ahead and figure that out now. I would like to hopefully get both of those petals done today because I'm saving the butter out of cream one, which I'm super excited to do because I think it's gonna be super cute. So I'm saving that one for last. Um, I did the I did the Adams Family one, which is the Crescent Moon. I did Company, which is the Martini Glass. I am currently working on Romeo and Juliet, which is gonna be a sword. And then I mishmashed some different clip arts together and sketched out a little mouse kind of sticking out of a bucket. Um, so that's gonna be the butter out of cream for Catch Me If You Can. I think I've decided that Curtains is going to be a rowboat. I also should probably get around to doing the petals with my mom's lace. So that means I need to pull out her wedding dress again, undo the tacking stitches on the lace. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a wash real quick. Probably just by hand or whatever. I have not done any of the things that I said that I would do. I have not come up with my week by week plan of what I'm going to stitch when I just have not done it. I keep telling myself I'm going to and then I just 
don't, uh, which is really frustrating for me. But, you know, I'm trying so hard to not wait until the last minute to rush and do everything. I'm, I'm really genuinely trying to, like, space things out and do things in a consistent manner that makes sense. But I have literally never been able to do that. I've always waited until the last minute to do everything. I always do my best work at the last minute. Throughout my entire academic career, I can count on one hand the number of projects that I've actually worked on ahead of, you know, the night before the deadline. And most of those were because they were group projects and I was working with other people. Because I can hack my brain and if I'm doing stuff for other people, I can get it done really quick. But if I know it's just for me, I, I can't make myself do it. All right, so I'm going to get back to stitching uh, and I'll probably have another update in another week or two. So I have my washing machine running in the background. So that is what you hear. Today is May 12th, which means we have 23 weeks to go or 22 and a half weeks to go. Um, I got four petals done last week. I'm going to try to get at least one done this week. I want to try to get two um, because I want to try to stay a little bit ahead of where I'm supposed to be. But um, I ordered some things that I think are going to help in a couple of videos about the original Judon dress. There's a creator on TikTok. I'll list her name and her, her ad up here. Um, and she was, she did like a deep dive on the Judon dress and she was like looking at all the pictures she could find and pointing out little details. And she pointed out that all of the petals are lined with horsehair braid. Um, and I thought, oh my God, that's perfect. That'll give my petals shape and it'll stop them from like flooping in on themselves. Um, so I ordered from Wawak, not sponsored, but if you want to sponsor me, I will gladly accept it. Um, I ordered some different horsehair braids. So I ordered quarter inch, which I think should be good for the smaller petals and half inch, which should be good for the bigger ones because I don't want them to be too rigid, um, but I do want to make sure that they're not, you know, rolling into themselves. So we got a cat toy and this is the half inch and I think I got the half inch in clear and then I got the quarter inch in white. So they have, from what I understand, they have a stiffer horsehair braid and they have a softer one and I got the softer one. So this is the half inch. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but this is pretty much exactly what I wanted. We'll see how this kind of holds its shape with the tighter curves. Because in theory, if the half inch is fine, then the quarter inch should hug those curves a little bit tighter. Oh, this one, the quarter inch, I got 288 yards. Um, so I'm going to be drowning in horsehair for a while, which is fine by me. This one was 144 yards. Oh yeah, I think this is gonna be just about perfect. This actually kind of wants to stay straight a little bit more. I think the weave, yeah, it's because the weave is slightly tighter to be able to get it smaller. Um, so this wants to kind of hold its shape a little bit more. Um, I'm going to have to do some experimenting. And I always say my plans and then I never actually get around to them. Hopefully next week I can start putting together some like sample petals because I really need to figure out what I want to back them with. And I'm kind of thinking I might need to back them with two layers so that I can kind of flat line the embroidery to one half of the petal and then have a separate backing. And then that way I can hopefully hide the seam allowance from when I sew and I turn it right side out. So that way I can hide the seam allowance between the more opaque layers and then it won't show through. So then I can also hide uh, this horsehair braid between the more opaque layers and it won't show through. So my plan, because I am on a manic upswing today for some reason, I am on four hours of sleep because the neighbors are getting their air conditioning redone or something. And the first thing that they did this morning was tear up the concrete that the AC was sitting on, uh, which is right outside my bedroom window. So that got me up bright and early. And I went to the gym, so I'm surging on endorphins. So I'm gonna try to get at least two more petals traced out. I think I have two more ready to go because I remeasured a couple of the ones that I already did and the smaller ones that I did before everything are right at 10 inches. So the second row is down. So the small petals are going to be 10 inches. So I might redelegate some of the more personal ones on top, um, partially to take attention away from any weird shenanigans I may have going on on the lower levels. So I'm going to try to at least pump out two more petals this week. And today's Thursday. So I got to chop, chop, get a move on.
but hopefully me waking up super early got my uh is gonna help me get my sleep schedule back on track because i'm tired of only being productive in the middle of the night lils you want to come say hi sweet rock oh she just wasn't sure the first time yeah she's kind of unsure of herself because she's not allowed on the table so hopefully this doesn't backfire on me yeah okay bye bye go about your day and i'm gonna go about mine break all right, today is June 7th. Oh my God, how are we already halfway through June? I swear it was February like yesterday. In my mind, it's still February and I think that's why I'm having a lot of problems getting motivated. Cause I have not been productive at all in the past three weeks. Um, the last time I talked to you, I mentioned a whole bunch of things in order that I was going to do and I have done absolutely none of them. Um, I've only gotten one petal stitched. I started on another. I haven't done the beading on either of them yet. All right, so I have 19 weeks to go. We have 19 weeks until the wedding. Um, so in addition to all of the dress stuff that I have to do, now we're also starting to get into the close enough where our vendors are actually trying to talk to us and make final decisions about things, um, which I, for some reason, my brain just will not let me do final decisions. It just won't. My brain also won't let me just sit down and work on things. It just won't. Which is really frustrating because I've already told everybody how I'm making the dress, that I'm making the dress, giving everybody kind of a general idea of what the dress is going to be. It's just so frustrating because I know I, I've been trying to do this early. I've been working on this since September of last year, but I just can't, I can't make myself do it. I want to do it. I want to have this finished, but I can't make myself just do it. And it's so frustrating all the time because <laughs> I've never been able to finish anything. All of the stuff that I, I've even put on YouTube saying, oh, I finally finished this dress. I finally finished. I finally finished. I've never actually finished it. There's always still something left that I have to do. I have a dress that's been hanging up since like February that literally all I have to do is sew the buttons on and fix the buttonholes and then I'm done. Then I'm done. It's, it's completely done. I can't make myself just do it. I've always been like this. I just can't. I don't know what mental block this is. I don't know if it's, I'm just worried that it's not going to turn out perfect. And if things don't turn out perfect, then I usually got punished for it. Usually for not trying hard enough. I'm also accepting the fact that I'm going to be at my fattest weight for my wedding in October, which is not ideal. I'm not happy about that. I'm not pleased with that, but I've been going to the gym regularly. I've been, you know, not obsessing over my food because that's not healthy. But I went to the doctor like two weeks ago and guess what? I gained five pounds since the last time I saw him. So I'm slowly just accepting the fact that I'm gonna just have to be fat, which I'm not happy about at all. It's just miserable. I'm just all around miserable. I'm not having a good time. And all the fun things that I would like to go do to kind of reduce stress and make myself feel better cost money. And I have no money because no one will hire me because this is a nepotism town. And our rent just went up, so. I think ultimately, I don't even know why I'm saying my goals because every time I say it aloud, it just never happens. I just, I just don't. I don't even try to work. Any motivation that I had to work towards it just goes away. But I think my plan is hopefully, just, I don't know if I have to electrocute my brain or something to be able to get enough motivation. I would like to get at least like 90% of the petals done by the end of August because I want the month of September, which I have a lot of traveling to do, I want that to be just constructing the overskirt. Because hopefully, knock on wood, once everything's done, it'll go together relatively quickly. It's just a whole bunch of like curved lines and circles. And then the month of October, those like first two weeks, I want to spend working on the underdress. I think my ace in the hole is going to be, um, I have a whole bunch of lace for my mother's wedding dress. And I think I would like to do that this week so I can just get back on schedule. Um, I'm going to make a whole bunch of petals in a couple of different sizes, just using her lace on the edge of it so that I can kind of tuck those in underneath and use those as like maybe the petals that won't be seen too much. Um, cause it is going to look different. So I don't want it to look weird and look not cohesive, but I also have no idea what I'm going to do with my veil situation. I have not thought about a wedding veil at all because I really want a cathedral length veil because I'm getting married in a cathedral and I feel like that is a missed opportunity if I don't do it. But at the same time, I find that super long veils don't really look good with ball gowns and it's kind of a ball gown shape. I just wish I could find some motivation like that. That would fix all of my problems is if I could just find some motivation and make myself do things. But I'm only productive at three in the morning. 
I get a random burst of productivity at exactly 3.30 in the morning. Every day. I'm tired of it because I want to be able to work in the daytime. And I want to be able to work and do things when I'm here by myself. And I don't have Coleman snoring loudly or shouting at video games in the other room. And then he keeps sweeping us off to random vacations to go stay with his family or to go do something else and I'm like no sorry I need that time I'm to work on my stuff and I don't really want to bring all that with me because it's a huge setup whatever I'm gonna have some caffeine and maybe go grocery shopping all right so today is Wednesday June 22nd which means I have about 17 weeks until the wedding um and I'm coming to you live from my bathroom uh because I have all of this lace that I just uh, undid off of my mom's wedding dress last night. This was just along the uh, hem. So I'm going to give this a quick wash. So I'm going to wash this by hand because as you can probably tell, it is pretty delicate and I uh, don't trust the washing machine. So in this giant tub, you can't really see it, but I have a little tub uh, full of some slightly warm water. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of material, oh, it's cold now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what kind of material this is. It feels kind of, it honestly feels like curtain material, um, which I would not be shocked if it was. I went to Walmart today and I got myself some Zote soap, uh, which I have been informed is very good for delicate things and washing by hand. So that is what I will be using today. The lace is mostly clean and mostly white, but I did want to wash it because it was at the hem, which means it would have been trailing on the ground a little bit. And also there was a little bit of water stain on one part of it. So I want to see if I can get that off. I'm not sure if I will be able to. I might have to hop in the tub so that I can do this and also talk to you. Or you're going to get this lovely rear three quarter view of my braids that I've slept in for three days. Uh, because we didn't have air conditioning for like three days. Uh, it is finally fixed. Oh, this is going to be the best view right there. I decided that kind of this week and these next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to be really kind to myself. So I'm going to knock out a couple of really easy petals. So I'm, you know, working on the one that's going to have my mom's lace on it from her wedding dress. And part of the reason that I'm doing that is, uh, to be completely honest, because I'm apparently showing the good, the bad, the ugly, and the angry of this, the middle of June is kind of rough for me personally because back to back to back, all within the span of about five days, is Father's Day, my dad's birthday, and the anniversary of my dad's death. Which is kind of weird to talk about because I didn't really have the greatest relationship with my dad. Because like when he was with me and when he had me, because my parents divorced when I was three, that's pretty much been my normal for all of my life was, you know, go to dad's house every other weekend. When I was about, it was right before I turned 16, because it was right before I started driving, um, my dad got remarried and I, I put this, I love my stepmother. Uh, she is one of the nicest, kindest people and her family was just so nice and kind and welcoming and generous to me. Um, they were wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, I have no complaints about that whatsoever. Um, but once I got to be a little bit older, um, my dad took a job out in San Antonio, Texas, which was very far away from New Orleans, Louisiana, which is where I lived. Uh, and for a while, he was commuting every other weekend to see um, me and also my stepmom and my stepsisters um, to live with them. But after a while, he just kind of decided he didn't want to do that anymore and up and moved to Texas and didn't come back. As you can imagine, that was a, a little a little much for a 15 year old girl to kind of go through. And, and honestly, at the time, I wasn't really given a proper opportunity to kind of come to terms with it and to kind of mourn it. Um, I, you know, did what I was supposed to. I put up a brave face. I didn't really complain about it. I didn't, you know, I didn't really make a big stink about it. But as I got older, I realized how much it did affect me. Because, you know, here I had this man who spent, you know, basic until that point, my entire life reassuring me that, you know, I was the most important thing in his life and that he would never leave me. And that if he ever went somewhere, he was taking me with him. And, you know, he always supported me and... You know, he wasn't there as much as he would like to, but he also worked in the emergency room. He was an emergency nurse, so, you know, him missing things like concerts and stuff was not necessarily his fault, but he did come to as many as he could. Um, so I will give him that. But as you get a little bit older um, and you start to think back on your youth and you put together some pieces of things that you didn't realize at the time or maybe you didn't know at the time, sometimes it makes you see people in a little bit of a different light. 
Um, so, as you can imagine, I had a little bit of a complicated relationship with my father. The last time I saw him was right before he died, and it was pretty much because he knew at that point that it was the end. And one of the things that they don't tell you about losing, specifically a father so young, um, is how much wedding stuff revolves around having your father there. Like, I have no idea who's gonna walk me down the aisle. Now granted, I'm not entirely sure that if dad was alive, I would have him walk me down the aisle because he wasn't, you know, there. He really didn't raise me. But it's just one of those little things that it's like every time we talk to a wedding professional, it's like, oh, well, when your dad walks you down the aisle or when your dad gives you away or, you know, for your father daughter dance. And it's always kind of awkward to be like, oh, we're not, we're not doing that. And then at the same time, like everybody expects you to be like really disappointed by it because then everybody starts to pity you and you're like, oh no, you have to go through like your wedding and you don't have your daddy there and it's just so sad and it's just kind of weird, you know? The worst part for me is logistics right now um, because I'm trying to decide if anybody is going to walk me down the aisle or if I'm going to walk myself because I also don't have any like <laughs> male figures in my life. I have a couple of uncles, but my family is like, the overwhelming majority women. Like it was, it was a whole thing. Maybe that can be a story time for another day of why my family's like all women. Because my plan A is I would really have liked my grandfather to walk me down the aisle because he did kind of raise me and I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house as a kid. Um, but he and my grandmother are not going to the wedding, mostly because they're old and the cathedral doesn't have bathrooms. But also my grandma, knock on wood, uh, actually, both of them turn 90 this year, so they're they're getting up there, and uh, as you get a little bit older, one fly left over. Uh, as you get older, uh, things like going even like half an hour is a lot to ask of them. Uh, so they will not be attending my wedding, which is disappointing, because that's part of the reason I had it in Louisiana to start with, but anyway. Because logistically, one of the more complicated things that I have to think about and figure out is what am I going to do about the like parent dance situation? Because I don't want to deny my fiance and his mom the opportunity to have like a mother son dance because I know that is something that means a lot to her. But at the same time, I don't want to just have like a random dance with a man just because he's like, I should have a father daughter dance. I don't, I don't really vibe with that. That's not me. That's not my style. But at the same time, I don't want everybody to be like, oh, poor Sam. She doesn't have her dad because he died. So logistically, that's something I'm trying to work out is what to do there. Some of the stains look like they're lifting, but I might have to cut around and not use the really bad ones. And we'll see what they look like when they dry. I might leave this to soak for a little bit. Um, but anyway, all that to say, I'm trying to be kind to myself and easy on myself for this week. I spent some time last night cutting out lace appliques from this lace that I forgot that I had that I got as a remnant at Joann's. It was like $60 a yard lace and I got a decent amount out of it for like, I think it was like two thirds of a yard left and you know, remnants are 50% off. So I got a good deal out of it. I'm going to let this soak for a little bit. So I have that. I also have my actual bridal lace that has a bunch of appliques in the middle in between the like edging um so now that coleman's not home and hopefully he's not coming home for a couple hours because the the exterminator guy woke me up like six hours earlier than i normally wake up but so i might try to hurry up and shoot so i might try to hurry up and get those cut out because i would like to do that on the dining room table just so i can like minimize the cat hair that's gonna get stuck in it so I think that's going to be my game plan for today. I need to eat because I haven't eaten yet and I went to the gym, so I am hungry. All right, so today is July 11th, 12th. I don't know, one of those days. I have 14 weeks left until the wedding. Uh, I just got back from Boston a couple of days ago. I wound up deciding not to bring my tiny frame with me to Boston because I just... I had a sneaking suspicion that I wouldn't get around to actually embroidering anything anyway, which was probably true. We wound up not having nearly as much downtime as I kind of anticipated having. So I'm honestly kind of glad I just didn't have that taken up room in my carry-on. This list is not accurate. So I started doing tally marks of how many petals that I had to get done for the week versus how many I did. Um, and then I did like a net difference and then that would get carried on over to the next week. Um, and I made, I know for a fact, 
I made more than two petals last week because I made like five of them because I went through my lace stash um, and I made a whole bunch of like filler panels of just that lace. So I knocked a whole bunch of them out real quick, which I should have a list of them because I was tracking time. Yeah. Anyway, I need to figure out how many I have done and how many I have left to do. I just put a thing on my Facebook that just said, if I could make Sam embroider anything on her wedding dress, it would be blank. Um, and I'm letting people give me ideas and some of them are really fun. Some of them I've already beaten them to. Um, but a couple of them are really cute ideas that I think I'm going to sketch up and start working on. Basically for the next couple of weeks, I just need to sit down and churn out as many petals as I possibly can. Because again, I need to take a serious kind of objective look at what I have already at kind of at the beginning of August and kind of reevaluate where I am. Because if, if, if I realize that I just am not, it's not working, um, I need the entire month of August to come up with a backup plan, which I don't want to do because I've already put so much work into it. I would hate to have to bail out at this point in time. Um, but we shall see. Oh, I did go to an antique shop like two weeks ago, it was right before I went to Boston, because I had to drive, you know, an hour and a half to go do my TSA pre-check because the place next to me that is capable of doing it decided that they were gonna be closed the entire week that I was available, so. Uh, there was an antique shop over there and I wound up picking up some lace, some really pretty white lace, and I think it was like eight or so yards of it was on the bolt. So that's more option, more edging. Um, I'm also starting to try to think of what I want to do with my veil because I saw a post on Instagram last night of a girl who had a big ball gown kind of dress, but then she also had the cathedral length veil and the way that she did it, it looked nice and it didn't look too weird. So now I'm thinking cathedral veil might be back on the table, but yeah, I need to do some uh, figuring out. I need to do some math and we'll, uh, we'll see where I am and hopefully I can start getting some work done this week. Also, I decided that I'm going to Louisiana in two weeks again uh, because it is my grandmother's 90th birthday. Uh, and that doesn't happen every day, so I am going to go down. But I do want to be there for that, so I also want to do a little bit of prep. I did have a lot of downtime last time I went to Louisiana, so I could do a lot of embroidery down there. And I probably will wind up doing a lot of embroidery down there. But we shall see. All right, so it is now August 1st. Uh, which I don't even want to know how, <laughs> I don't even want to know how many weeks we are to the wedding because it's not that many. Did I say August 1st? It's August 3rd now. That just shows you how fast all of this time has been going for the past couple of weeks. That we are within the 11 week mark, um, of about 11 weeks until the wedding. It's been a rough couple of weeks. Then I went to Louisiana for about a week to go do some wedding things and also to celebrate my grandma's 90th birthday, which was a lot of fun. Uh, while I was there, I did manage to get one of my bigger petals done, which was my goal. My goal was I wanted to get a couple of the bigger petals done, um, but I got pulled into a whole bunch of meetings kind of last minute because nobody there apparently does things in advance, uh, which is really frustrating when you're trying to plan a wedding. But also in my defense, the petal that I completed was my molecules petal, which had the most beading out of all of them. Or at least I'm pretty sure it has the most beading because all of the molecules have a little bead on that, or all the atoms have a little bead in them. Which I did have to make the executive decision to not do the hydrogens on the oxytocin molecule, mostly because they didn't get drawn in, um, but also because there would be 66 hydrogen atoms on that molecule. And that's just, it's not worth it. <laughs> I already spent four hours beating all the 40 something hydrogens and 12 nitrogens, 12 oxygens and two sulfurs. So now I'm pretty at the point where the rest of August, I need to be like balls to the wall, getting about one petal done every day. Um, I took a couple of days earlier this week to work on the corset pattern because I'm going to need some sort of corset support. Um, I haven't decided whether it's going to be built into the dress or a separate garment. There's pros and cons to both. Um, I might make a separate video talking about this when I'm talking about the dress, the underdress construction. But I needed to get this done quicker because I need to start wearing it so that I can give my body time to get used to wearing a corset. Because um, that's not something that you can just jump into a 12 hour day wearing a corset and just be fine. So I need to build up to that and get used to that. So I'm not at my final pattern. I did have to make a couple of adjustments and I don't know if I've been watching too much of Bianca on The Closet Historian. 
um, because I, I have been watching so much of her that I feel very confident in my pattern drafting skills, even though I haven't put the actual practical practice into. Um, and I'm sure that will be my downfall and cause me problems later. But for now, um, I'm just going to fall victim to my own hubris and think that I'm good and I have my final pattern. And that whole thing only took me, I don't know, four hours to construct. So that is a huge weight off of my shoulders that I don't have to worry about that until we get much closer. I signed up for this virtual stitch in thing um, where it's going to be two hours on Wednesdays and Saturdays where we just kind of like sit there and, and hop on like a Google Meet thing and talk about what we're doing. Um, which I think is going to be really helpful because I thrive in routine. So if I have something that I know I have to be stitching through those two hours, um, then that'll give me a chance to like make sure that I'm prepped and because I'm all about optics and looking better than everybody else, really be on myself to make sure that I'm working outside of everything so that I can have something to show. So my first one of those today, uh, which also means that I probably need to clean my room because it is a disaster because I didn't put everything away after I traveled to Boston. Um, and then I have everything that I need to put away after I traveled to Louisiana. So it's a double disaster in there. I also have fully commandeered our guest bedroom as a workroom in case I need it, which I've also learned a slightly more effective way of tracing out all of my stuff on the frame is to project onto the front, but trace from the back. So I can trace on the back and do like a light tracing that shows through and then flip it over and then darken the lines. Because the problem with tracing from the front is that sometimes your own hand gets in the way of the projection and you can't really see. So it takes a little bit longer to trace, but it's worth it because everything actually like shows up where it's supposed to. So I need to take some time today to clean my room and start stitching so that I can have, you know, something to show when I get to my stitch in later today. Go team! Break! Mm -hmm. 